All right, so if you were watching the video a minute ago, it all went quiet and everything. It turned out I pulled my microphone out and crashed everything. So now that I've fixed everything, for now at least, we'll carry on. So... What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh. Well, did you find anything useful? Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. Oh, I've heard of that. Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? Do you have a boyfriend? Not anymore. There was someone. A guy in my final year, but it didn't work out. Neither did my degree. I'm sorry. I'm not. Tell me more about your family. When I was a little girl, I used to spend the winter with my grandfather and grandma. They were the best times. Warm and safe in their tiny cottage. My grandfather rolled cigarettes while grandma made hot chocolate and cakes. One day, he stopped his groaning. He put the lid back on his tobacco jar and took me in his arms. I laughed and wriggled, but he hushed me to be silent. With his unshaven chin all scratchy in my ear, he told me his secret. What did he say? He said, I don't smoke, but she likes to think I do. What a weird old man. <laughs> I my grandfather weird. He was the nicest guy ever. Aww. I wish I was back in that cottage instead of this crummy apartment in this noisy city. Well, makes sense. Okay, let's check out the You're manuscript. You're not going to believe what i found. It's not another part of the clown's costume, is it? Nope, it's in my trousers. It's a Ta -da. medieval manuscript. Khan left it in the safe at the Ubu. It's incredible. Is this what he took from Planta? It could be, which means it's worth enough to kill for. Look there, two guys on the same horse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Maybe they couldn't afford one each. Or what maybe it means something else. Have you else? ever heard of the Knights <laughs> Templar? Uh, uh, of course. That's what I mean. Yes. With an image of two knights sharing a horse. Whatever this manuscript means, it's connected with the Templars. How come you know about these knights? I learned about them while writing an article on the Crusades. How convenient. This guy named Hughes de Payne. Arrive one day at the court of King of Jerusalem. He offered to protect the Christian pilgrims from the displaced Muslim armies. The king would be able to guarantee safe transit to Christians in the Holy Land. Safer journeys meant more pilgrims, and pilgrims meant trade and wealth. Mm -hmm. The Templars proved invaluable to the king as a mercenary army. It was said that they never asked how many the enemy numbered, just where they were. And uh -huh. as the years went by, the Templars grew in wealth and number. They were so rich. Even kings came to them for loans. But at the height of their power, they fell foul of the King of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. Mm -hmm. Thousands of Templars were subject to torture and confessed to heresy. No one expects this of Inquisition. At the end of the Inquisition, there wasn't much they wouldn't confess to. They no. left. Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned alive. Boo. Jeez. So the treasure is hidden, waiting to be discovered? What the hell happened there? If there ever was a treasure, kind of it's jumped. been lost for 600 years. Anyway, we're supposed to be investigating a serial killer, not a medieval treasure trove. But maybe that's what the clown and his accomplices are after. Maybe this manuscript is the key. You'd better leave it here for safekeeping. Yeah. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Let's have a quick hang on. Broken sword. Manuscript. Jump. Go skip. Uh, yeah, jump. Hmm. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. The only mythological bull I know of is the Minotaur, but he was only half bull. I don't think I'd like to be half a bull, even if it was the bottom half. What's yeah. the object between them? It looks like a gem on top of a tripod. Uh. There's a guy working on a loom. He's weaving a carpet or a tapestry. Or a duvet cover. It's a clue to a place, I reckon. Somewhere famed for weaving and ships. Where folk live in barrels? It beats copper boxes. Hmm. 
a knight with a crystal ball. Now, there's something written on the scroll beside the knight. Yes, but it's written in Latin. Per disciplinum mea lux videbis. By my teachings, you will see, see the, the light. light. You speak Latin. Where did you learn a trick like that? A trick? I studied law, okay? I can read Latin. Ma, you're touchy. Tell me that again. Hmm. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. She reminds me of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. She was the one who said mirror, mirror on the wall, wasn't she? She made me cry so much when I was a kid, Mom carried me out of the movie theater. She didn't frighten me in the least. Like I said, I was only a kid. I didn't like the crocodile in Peter Pan either. See, that's the thing about law. It's so set in tradition and Latin and everything that it's it's kind of just stuck in the dark. Well, not stuck in the dark ages, but it's stuck. But you know, and it's losing out to current situations. But that's just me carrying on. Um, There's a guy with a between no, no. them. Let's face it. We need help, George. Yes, Someone we do. Someone knows about these things. Who do you suggest? Indiana Jones. Oh, sure thing. I'll fight the fight to Atlantis right now. His name is Lobino. Lobino. Huh. Some stuffy old fossil gets horny over ancient relics, I suppose. Far from it. Andre isn't stereotypical professor you have in mind. Andre. Where can I find this Lobino guy? At the mm. museum. I'll give you the address. Okay. Let's take another. No, let's not. Look there, too. How do I get out? There's a but the room. A night, the night through. Yeah, okay, how do I get out? There's between them. There. Yeah, okay, I have to look at everything. Alright then. Okay. To go. Okay. Don't forget to look for Lobino at the Kroon Museum. Kroon Museum. Okay, okay. Ooh. Alright. <sighs> okay, so we can't go there or there. That's the cafe. Museum Kuhn. Okay. Um, okay. Mm hmm. A metal rod attached to the wall was connected to the window. What's this? In the case was a spindly tripod, blackened with age and pitted with rust. It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. A notice uh, identified as 15th century from Western Ireland. It was found huh? in Loch Mar at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! Was it? This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I was excited. <laughs> It's from Ireland. Ah, to be sure, to be sure. Pardon my me. Worst we possible Irish accent. Are you Lobino? Oh no! Fancy you mistaking me for him? No, I am the deputy custodian. But Lobino does work here. Work? I wouldn't go so far as to call it that. He studies here most days, but as you can see for yourself, not. Today. Hmm, okay. Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. The sign on the tripod says it was found at a Templar preceptory. It does? Yeah. It doesn't mention John D at all. Most remiss. You don't know anything about the tripod, do you? No, I don't. I never had much of a start in life, you see. I owe a little education again to my uncle. He was an optician, but he also doubled as the village school teacher. He taught me the alphabet. Wait, the 19 letters of it. The <laughs> bottom row of the chart was uh, too small even for him to read. So he left them out. Why don't you start over and enroll for adult education? You know, I never thought of that. Do you see? If I studied art and did all my homework, I could be a professor of history. At your age? Dream on. 
<laughs> Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. And they ask you to park their cars? They are <laughs> No, no, no. They I am an authority on the exhibits in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is... I am no scholar, not like Monsieur Lobino. Okay. Can you give me any further information about the tripod? Certainly, Monsieur. It's infamous. That tripod, that belonged to John D. What's the importance of John D's tripod? D was the most famous escapologist of the 16th century. The Udini of his time. Don't you mean alchemist? Escapologists use ropes, chains, and handcuffs, not tripods. <laughs> but whatever he was, that is the tripod he used in his experiments. Hmm, I got the feeling we're going to need this. What kind of experiments did John D. perform with his tripod? Oh, <laughs> the usual. Didn't you study chemistry at school? Yeah, but we skipped over thaumatology. Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out of the case? Ah, uh, no! That tripod is protected by a sophisticated surveillance system. How sophisticated? A painfully loud alarm bell. How Kay. is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein that tripod is situated. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is... Well, stretching yeah, it a little. Yeah, it's just a weighted it system. Never yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. Hmm. Okay. Um. We'll leave it for thanks now. Thanks for your help. Yeah, thanks for nothing, you idiot. Uh, what else we got? The totem pole looked distinctly out of place in the setting of the museum. Yeah, what's that doing here? Watch out! You will have that down on top of us! Hmm. I wonder if I could use that to crack the case open or something. Ooh. Leave it alone. That closet is over 3,000 years old. Hmm. Closet? It's a sarcophagus. <laughs> it was an ancient Egyptian sarcophagus with a beautifully painted effigy of its owner on the lid. I want to climb inside and hide till you close. Then I think I open it. Um, hmm. What if I close the window? Can I do that? Oh, okay, so it just opens a bit. Do, 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 do. Hee <laughs> hee. This is ridiculous. I could be here for hours. Oh. Okay. Um, so right idea, just wrong time. Hmm. Okay. Um, so what? Go back to... Police. Well, I don't need to go to the police. Let's talk to Nico again. Maybe she's got an idea. Looks like there's something here. Hi. I've been to the Croon Museum. Did you speak to Labino? No. He wasn't there. Hmm. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Really? <laughs> There's I don't want to. There's but the I've been through There's a between 
Like, don't click on that. I found the tripod. Where? In the museum. It belonged to the Templars. It was dug up in Ireland at a place called Loch Marne. I have heard of Loch Marne. I read an article about the castle. Take a look for yourself. A popular gossip magazine? You read that rubbish? No, I write it. Professor Nigel Pegram excavating the medieval castle at Loch Marne. That's strange. What? He resigned his chair at Durham University in order to devote his time to the excavation. Not only that, but he cancelled the filming of a fourth series of his popular television program. This hmm. site at Loch Marne must be awful important to him. He's a professor of history. They're all cuckoo. All the same, I'd like to talk to this Professor Pegram. How do you feel about a trip to Ireland? Disappointed. Huh? That I won't be going. I want to follow up the Belotta case. If you really think Pegram's dam is important, why don't you visit Loch Marne? On my own? I'm not so sure about that. Where is Ireland exactly? Huh. Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know, but I can't imagine it was coincidence. Hmm, okay. I have to go. Okay. I'll see you later. Ah, okay. Go to the airport. I'm going to Lock Marne. A few hours later. Yeah, well, I've been I stuck in the castle on the way into Lock Marne. Stuck in the, the airport. Where Pegram's excavation was located. I arrived with no luggage whatsoever. How the hell was I going to survive? It was a trap door in the sidewalk. Couldn't I open. tugged at the trap door, but it was locked from the inside. Hmm. Hi there. What? What's your name, kid? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? Uh. Hmm. Eh. Yeah, hmm. Okay. I'm George Stobart, and I'm with the good guys. You're a head case, mister. <laughs> Two sandwiches short of a picnic. Cut the crap and tell me your name. Liam McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run. From me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? Oh, sir. He drinks every last penny down his evil throat and leaves me poor old mother bedridden and dying of presumption to try to buy him medicine. Chop firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skin flint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Mm. Ma, says I. See what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly, me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm off to Dublin, heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I run away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly truthful. Compared to yeah. him, Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for Altar Boy of the Year. All of a sudden, I something feel the need for violins in the background. What can you tell me about the castle, McGuire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No. It's locked up. Does anyone live there? No. Only, what do you want to know? Oh, nothing. You know something about the castle you're not telling me, don't you? No. What is yes. it you're covering up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. Yeah, the look on your face doesn't tell me that at all. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh, there's a ghost. It's called the Phantom of Loch Man. <laughs> You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Mister, I don't believe no ghosts. With my very own eyes. Last Tuesday night, I went up to see what that dig was about. 
I just reached the top of the wall when I hears this awful noise. What awful. sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting, like O'Brien's pig, only worse. It was coming from inside the castle. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. The yard was full of shadows that could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but my legs had lost their stuffing. Hmm. Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is too. I sat on my ass, waited while the moon went down. Then out it comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then I hear this spluttering and splashing and horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Why, I fell off the bloody wall. <laughs> I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. Yeah. There is. The bloody place is haunted. Um. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? Here in Lochmarn? They all dress like clowns. <laughs> the man I'm looking for is a dangerous psychotic. Jesus. It's just like that film I saw. There's this clown, see? And he's after this kid who saw him kill a guy. He tries to warn the sheriff. Only no one believes him. Then, while he's in the tub, the clown cuts him up with a chainsaw. My God. That doesn't sound suitable for a kid like you. Who are you calling a kid? I'm 25. Yeah, right. You're not a day over 14. Oh no, it's 25 that I am. Married with a car and three kids. Ten kids if you count the wives. <laughs> <clears throat> My bullshit Thomas has just went to elephant. Do you know a man <laughs> called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't because he's not here now. But if I see him, I'll ask him. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? Digging for buried treasure. Jewels and gold and skeletons. Like in the films. Hmm. I feel like I'm wasting my time okay, with this guy. Mister. Sorry, this kid. Let's go in here. Hmm. Look at this guy. He wasn't listening. He didn't say anything. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, my name's George Stobart. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Hey, O'Brien. Can I help you? Hmm. Bless she? You. Have you heard of the Phantom? More than that, I've seen it. And let me tell you, it's a dreadful spectre. So it's not just a local legend. There really is a phantom of Loch Marne. Oh no, I was talking about the phantom of the opera. <laughs> have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? I most certainly have. A remarkable institution. Did you know, they were the originators of our system of credit. Their financial empire stretched from the Atlantic to the Caspian Sea. With bases in so many countries, they had to establish new methods of fiscal transfer. So, the Knights Templar were nothing but a bunch of bankers. Oh. I don't get it. Are you saying these Templar guys invented bank charges? In a manner of speaking, I suppose they did. Mm -hmm. What a dirty trick. Didn't anyone try to stop them? <laughs> oh yes, they were arrested and many were burnt at the stake. Good. They bloody well deserved it if they were anything like my bank manager. Yeah. What can you tell me about the castle, Mr. O'Brien? It's a fine sight now, isn't it? Dates back to the 10th century, you know. Most of the existing building was added much later, of course. Are the ruins open to the public? Oh no, it's much too dangerous. Anyway, there's nothing of interest remaining. Hmm. How can I get into the castle? Well, those walls were built specifically to stop people getting in, Mr. Stobart. But I dare say you'll find a way if you've the will. Can you tell me about the tripod which was found at the castle? Now there's a bone of contention and controversy. It was dug up by an Englishman of the archaeological persuasion. 
Who was this Englishman? Professor Pegram. Uh -huh. The same man who dug up the gem. Do you know where I can find Pegram? You're too late to meet that fella. Is he dead? Not that. But he's gone from the village. A saw pint with our esteemed host, I might add. I see. Why is Pegram's departure upset the landlord? He's lost a paid guest. That's why. More than that. There's the question of an unsettled bid. Poor Michael seen red over the business, and I don't blame him. Yeah, it's always money. So he's scarpered. Can you tell me more about the landlord? Mick Leary? He's what you call a, a would-be sophisticate. The trouble is, his idea of sophistication extends as far as putting paper in the lavatory. I never worked out why he did that. It's much too dark in there to read. That's true. Have you ever run your hand over the back of the door? The graffiti is written in braille. <laughs> Do you know where Pegram has gone? I'm sorry, but I don't. He hoped anchor in the dark and shipped out before the dark. Why did he do that? Who knows? A guilty conscience or a secret assignation. Whatever the reason, he'll not be missed in Lachmar. Maybe now the fuss about the gem has died down. We can get back to now. The gem? What can you tell me about the gem which Pegram found? Now there's a gem which should never have been taken. A man would have to be full of greed to covet that stone. What's your interest in the jewel? Not a reporter, are you? No. Oh no. Thank the Lord for that. Okay. Goodbye for now. Let's talk to the other guy. Hi, my name's Stobart. George Stobart. Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Do you know Professor Pegram? Do I know him? Do I know the good professor himself? No, I don't. <laughs> I, mean, I know <laughs> I was, he I was is. expecting that. I don't know him to talk to. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? Is the science of archaeology part. Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Probably that two fat bastards sat in the bar. With condoms, more likely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's dig? I tried it myself, but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a yeah. nerd. Yeah, I think incompetent. And the rest of them put together? Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? Oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He does joined up writing. Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? Um, I'll say yes. That's right. Professor Stobart, Miskatonic University. You're an archaeologist, and you're asking us about the castle. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. The gentleman was talking to me. How come you didn't leave with the others? I didn't know they'd gone. Oh, yes. Packed their spades and shovels and away they went. Seems I missed all the excitement. What excitement? Exactly. Uh, Bye for now. Yeah, let's talk to the landlord. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> Take your <pack. laughs> well, That's what you Irish say, isn't it? Do you want something? Or you're just flaunting your xenophobia? Yeah. Well, I, I was trying that's to That's an social. interesting beard. Hmm. Is it a room you're after? Um. Sure. That's not a bad idea. Do you have a vacancy? I could. If you don't mind waiting until the last guest checks out. No problem. When will that be? When the undertaker comes to collect him. Um. I'll, I'll pass. Have you served any. Uh, clowns recently? No. You're the first today. <laughs> you saw that going. Do you know a man called Pegram? Indeed I do. Are you a friend of his, by any chance? Oh no. I'm just trying to track him down. Me too. That son of a bitch should be locked away. Ooh. Did Pegram stay here? Yes, he did. Six nights plus breakfast. I'll try a glass of beer, please. Is this your first pint of real ale? Uh, well, I guess so. What's real ale, anyhow? Beer that's brewed from natural ingredients to traditional methods. It shouldn't be kept under pressure or refrigerated. 
Yeah. And finally, it should have a good body and distinctive character. In other words, it's flat and worn with bits in, and it makes you fall over. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible stuff. Don't drink it. Um. Okay. Look, I gotta be going. It was a beer-stained piece of toweling. Otherwise known as a beer towel. Can we take it? It was a beer-stained oh. piece of toweling. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who's this guy? The guy sat in the corners. I'd been taught not to judge people by their appearance Oops. or their clothes or the length of their hair. Nobody ever said anything about runny noses. Yeah. Got a bit of wire there. Hi there, old timer. What? Ooh. Ooh. Nasty cold you've got there. As soon as the words left my lips, I regretted them. Is there such a thing as a cold which isn't nasty? I put the question to Father Mahoney. Father, says I, why were we born to suffer snot? What did he say? He said, it's my reward for being out all night like a sinner. Pious prig. Anyway. <laughs> This is no ordinary cold. It is the hay fever. Polynosis? Thank you. <laughs> what policeman are you? Excuse me? Police. No. I'd know it if you were. What's the wire? What's that you're making? It's a necklace, me fucko. Oh, sure. Made out of steel wire? <laughs> That's right. A necklace for my pretty one. When my little lover feels it round her slender neck, she'll be mine. All mine. Mm. <laughs> Can I buy you a beer? Very kind, I'm sure. But I don't drink the stuff Leary sells. What's wrong with it? I've seen what it can do. <laughs> can you tell me how to get into the castle? The demon dream. Don't even think about it, me bucko. Doc Barn Castle. Is haunted. That's what the kid outside told me, but I don't believe it. Then you're a fool. Ghosts don't bother me. I still want to visit that castle. You can't. It's not open to the public. There's no one around to stop me, is there? That's right. Nothing human, anyhow. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen the ghost? To be sure. With me very own eyes. Can you describe the ghost? It was horrible. A wee stunted beast, long beak, straggly, flappy wings. Are you sure it wasn't a wild animal? A rabbit or a skunk or something? Skunk? In Loch Marne? That'll be the day. No, that was a ghost, to be sure. Aye, to be sure, to be sure. I think I know what you saw on the castle wall. I know what I saw. I don't think so. It was the kid, McGuire. What? He was up on the wall last Tuesday night. He thought you were the Phantom of Loch Mar. Ah. That makes sense. The sneezing. Do you know Pegram, the archaeologist? That's the scrawny fellow who was poking around at the castle, isn't it? No, I don't know him. Hmm, okay. I'll see you later. Ah, there you go. As soon as the old guy looked away, I grabbed this piece of wire. I'm sure they'll come in handy. Okay, one more guy. Let's talk to him. My name's George. Pleased to meet you, mister. My name's Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, eh? What can you tell me about the castle? There is nothing there. Just an old ruin. How old? I really couldn't tell you. Hmm. Have you ever explored the castle yourself? I used to play there sometimes, but when I was a kid. Then one of the little ones fell off the wall, broke his head and died. We didn't go there anymore. You haven't been up there recently? No. Okay. Do you know Professor Pegram? He's the archaeologist, isn't he? That's right. Did you work at Professor Pegram's dig? <laughs> what gave you that idea? Uh, he's very nervous. Can I get you another drink? Oh, no, thank you. I shouldn't be drinking at all. I'm on tablets and my nerves. 
more than a pint and I'll pass out. Hmm. Okay. See you later. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. Look, I gotta be gone. Um. Okay. Can I? Uh, and that's not for the inside, isn't it? So let's go out. Hmm. Hi. Do you speak English? Well, no. What if I was to say no? An implication of cognizance shrouded in denial. A pretty poser of a paradox indeed. I gave him the look I'd perfected when I was 12 and was going to be the greatest hypnotist of all time. It was a killer. Are you attempting to hypnotize me or is it the constipation you're suffering? I was a little out of practice. <laughs> Have you seen Professor Pegram? No, he's packed up and gone. Do you happen to know where? Back in England, I suppose. England, huh? What can you tell me about the castle? Not much, I'm sorry to say. Most of its history is long forgotten. Ah, but if these old stones could only speak, what stories they tell. Stories to make your toes curl and your blood run cold. You know, this castle is said to be over 600 years old. You know, if the stones could talk, they'd probably say, Get these guys off me! They're bloody heavy! I have to go now. Pushing with all my strength got me nowhere. Yeah, that's not going to get that way. Okay. Um. Let's talk to the kid again. Maybe he's going to help us. Hey, McGuire. What? Do you know anything about Pegram's dig? He wouldn't let me anywhere near it. I offered to help, but he chased me off. I didn't want to see his smelly old hole anyhow. <laughs> Did anyone from the village work at the dig? Pegram bought some students and bums with him. He reckoned no one in Loch Marn would know what to look for. The only local guy who worked for him was Sean Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald says he's never been anywhere near the dig. He's having you on, mister. Hmm. Okay. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. <clears throat> Let's go back in and talk to this guy. Mr. Fitzgerald? McGuire says he saw you working at the dig. What's more, he saw you talking with Pegram. I knew this would happen. I knew I'd get caught. I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah, you too, if I'm right. You're not from the Social Security. Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, uh, I was claiming benefit at the same time I was working for people. I'm not in a <gasps> position to make judgments, Sean. Asshole. That's between you and your conscience. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? Yes. So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. He came to see me early this morning. Said he was leaving. He asked me to give this package to a guy called Marque. Mark. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I, I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. So what? You didn't have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. Hmm. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. But he'll kill me. Who will? The man from Paris. Jack Marquet. Pegram told me if I gave him the package unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. Hmm. I'll Marquet. deal with Jacques Marquet. Give the package to me. No. Why should I trust you? I don't know who to trust anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Lockmarn gem. 
Hey. <gasps> hey, I just seen a big red. Get out of here, Maguire. Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. Get out! Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy maker. Oh, yes. And who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. Hmm. Something on the table, but I can't pick it up. Okay, let's go have a look. I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding me own business, when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. Would you look at that, says I. And I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass. But the car just flies at him. Just too fast for poor old Fitzy. And hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out. And I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie. A pixie? I bet that was the... Hey, Maguire. What? Did this pixie have a outfit? Scarlet? Remember the pixie outfit? See. He was wearing a stupid mask. Are you a special agent? Sorry to disappoint you, kid, but I'm not. Did Fitzgerald drop anything when he was hit? I didn't see. It all happened so fast. Maybe the package fell somewhere out of sight. Hmm. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. It was a trap door in the sidewalk. Pavement. It's called a pavement. The plastic cover had been smashed and broken away, revealing a switch. Hmm. Well, switch it off then. I pushed the switch down, but in doing so, it snapped off in my hand. Hmm. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. Look, I gotta be going. Okay. Uh... Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Do you recognize the name on this card? No. Should I? Nah, it was a long shot. No. Okay. Look, I gotta be going. It was impossible to return the switch to its original position. Hmm. Um. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. May I have another beer? Certainly, sir. Same again? Yeah, please. How is this stuff made? That's the secret of the master brewer, sir. Each barrel is lovingly manhandled in time on a pattern. Suspended on skillfully tied ropes of the finest hemp. Lowered into the cellar, utilizing the forces of original gravity, like manner from him. I'm sorry, but the pump appears to be broken. I can uh -huh. fix it for you. I don't think so. This is a job for a professional electrician. So that's what the switch did. Oh, well, at least the glass washer is still working. It's not my dear, is it? 
So yeah, an electrician. So I I'm an electrician. Remember. Check out my credentials. Well no. Isn't that marvelous? <laughs> Here's a house bedeviled with faulty wiring of a wayward nature. Here's you, an electric man, with a little plastic card to prove it. Hmm. I still want to see what you can do before I let you touch me beer pumps. You can make a start on the glass washer. And when you finish that, will you take a look at the pumps? Hmm. It was an electrical plug attached to the glass washer. I used all my knowledge of electrical engineering to examine the plug. So where are you going? I couldn't see anything obviously wrong with the machine. I figured it must be the wiring. Hmm. Try the wire, maybe? Maybe the fuse is gone. I replaced the fuse with a piece of wire. Ah, okay. I knew it was dangerous, but I was desperate enough to disregard everything I knew about standard safety precautions. Excuse me, Mr. Leary. I fixed your glass washer, no problem. Bingo! And a blessing to all the saints. A free half pint to that man on the house. Now, could you take a look at the beer pumps? Oh, I guess so, but I'm not making any promises. If you can't fix them, I'll have a riot on the hands. The pumps are in the cellar, right? That's right. You'll find a flashlight down there somewhere. Okay. Down we go.